Hi, my name is Chris Noring. I'm going to talk about Cypress, which is an amazing test runner that I really want you to try out. It's a test runner built for humans. Cypress comes with a lot of features if you look at the webpage, like time travel, debuggability. But the thing that really impresses me the most is that they promise that it should be flake free for end to end tests, which is an amazing promise to make because most end to end tests, in my experience, are a bit flaky. And we can't really rely on them. And uh, additionally, they come with automatic weighting, which is also an issue with end to end tests. You always need to do these kind of promises, and you don't really know is the page there? Is my button there? Can I click it? But of course, it also adds things such as screenshots and videos, which are super nice. And mocking data is also very easy to do, as I will show you in this video. So, why do we care so much about testing? Well, testing is a crucial part of what we do. For that reason, we need good libraries and even better tools. We have excellent tools for coding. We have excellent IDEs. We got VS Code. We got WebStorm. All of these amazing tools. But what do testing have? Nothing, I would say, until Cypress. So we need reliability. We talked about all that already, and Cypress does give us that reliability that we desperately need. And one of the best things with Cypress is that it's completely agnostic. You don't actually care whether you are coding end to end tests towards React, Angular, or even Svelte. It works. And also, it works the same on, on every OS, which is a thing we have come to expect, but it's really not that easy to achieve. As for installing Cypress, it's pretty easy. Whatever project you got open, you just npm install Cypress and you will get Cypress in your node modules and you will be able to use it straight off of the bat. So once you have it installed, the only thing you need to do is to call Cypress open. And as you can see on this slide, there are four major ways in which we can open Cypress. And by that, you are in business. But don't believe me and my slides. Let's dive into VS Code and let's code some tests and see how Cypress actually acts when we open it. Okay, so we've opened up VS Code. I believe in starting really fresh. So all we have here is this directory. First thing we're going to do is to instantiate an uh, Node.js project. So we type npm init minus y, and the minus y simply means that we rely on some smart defaults. So this will create a Node.js project for us. And next up, we're going to install Cypress itself. And there. We showed you in the slides that there are at least four ways in which we can do this command. mpx Cypress open is one of them. But uh, the whole point is to call Cypress open somehow. So this will kick off Cypress. So the first time around this is being run, it will create a Cypress folder for us. And inside of that folder, we will get a bunch of sample tests. So here it's telling us to get started, right? So we have our hello project. We can see that up here. We got our Cypress folder and then a bunch of folders that mean something for Cypress, like fixtures, integration, plugins, and so on. We click OK, got it. And let's see what happens. So the only thing we have here in terms of tests are the examples that it gave us because this was a completely new project and it was the first time that we ran Cypress Open. As you can see, there are quite a few tests in here. We can click one of those tests and this will kick off this test and we just wait for it to run. Now you can see here that there are quite a few steps in here that it uh, does and it runs one test after another and it is soon done. There, 16.76 seconds later, it's able to have run all the tests and all of them are green, which we kind of expect, but we haven't really learned any Cypress at this point. So what we will do is to return back to our project in VS Code. In VS Code now, we can see our Cypress folder, we can see all of those directories that we talked about, but the one that we're going to focus on firstly is the one called Integration. Now, Integration contains this examples folders, as I said, that Cypress gives us the first time we call Cypress open. So what we will do is simply to keep on extending this one to add a new file, call that test spec JS. You can call it some whatever we want. Okay, then close this. We don't want to see that. Okay, we have a test file. Okay, we have authored our first test here. We have a describe, we have an it, which is a method, we have expect, which is the way that it verifies that everything is the way it's supposed to be. So we head back out to Cypress. Okay, so we see that it has picked up test spec. This time around, we see that this has expected true to equal false. Uh, we can fix this test by going back. Save it. Now, this is not a very useful test, but it does tell us how the runner works, that it's 
every time we add a file or, or change some code the test is going to be rerun and everything is updated there's no reason to close cypress while working with it. now it's time to author a more real end-to-end -end test so we create this file page spec reading it from the top we see that we have a suite then we have a test that says visits page then we're using this global sci object which is short for cypress and the visit method now the visit method takes you to a certain url and as i said before cypress is smart this way you don't need to wait and verify that it's actually there you know that when this method has finished executing there is a page there then we use sci contains which uh, tries to grab an element in this case it's looking for an element with a text type so once it finds that element it tries to click on it thereafter it starts to verify so this is uh, a way to check the url of the browser and uh, then we call the method should which asserts that in this case it includes uh, this part of the url so once we click this element this is our new url ideally thereafter we grab another element with the css class action email and again we do an assertion and say you should be empty have value empty string lastly we do a get on action email and we try to use the function type which essentially types characters into this so this appends characters into this text element and thereafter we do should now in normal cases this just works with vanilla js but imagine that you're using angular or, or maybe Vue or react we want to verify that this whole binding connection thing works the way it should so uh, how about we run this test in cypress and see what happens you click on page spec and this time around quite a few things happen all the things that we said so let's take it from the top first off we click visit and we can see that it enables us to render here on the right side the actual address here example cypress.io next step is us doing a contains type we do an attempt to trying to grab an element as you can see here when we click contains we can see how this is being highlighted on the right side so this is really good visual indicator to ensure that things works the way we should we are finding the element that we need so here type is highlighted thereafter we interact with the element by clicking it we can see that through the red indicator here and then we see a new page being loaded because it says new url we have the ability to do an assertion so we expect the new url to have a certain url ending and that assertion is green uh, remember how we said slash command slash action should be part of the url it is thereafter we try to get a new element the other one called action email we can see here on the right that this is the element in question thereafter we do an assertion we assert that it's empty which is a good starting point for any kind of input element thereafter we are actively typing fake email inside of this element and then we assert upon the result and make sure that the enter text is visible okay let's try to summarize all our findings on cypress cypress is really an amazing test runner as you can see it's quite easy to use it npm install cypress you have it right there then we call cypress open then we have our cypress browser that's up and running it's a really amazing test runner and there are lots of powerful assertions that we could be using for example to assert the url or the content of a form and we have taken it for a spin on an easy test as well as another test that uh, navigates to a page tries to interact with different elements and so on so in our next part on cypress we will see how we can apply that to an actual spa application so i hope you're excited after this initial video